Hey everybody, it's Jason Box and the GFS model is forecasting warm conditions for North Greenland. This is an uncommon situation and having a closer look, it becomes a story of fern winds. So let's get into it. The climate reanalyzer has a warm temperature anomaly forecast for the coming three days from today, the 26th of June, 2023 and it's forecast by the global forecasting system model to be say six eight celsius above normal the average temperature this white line is the zero degree isotherm so these green colors are above melting temperatures the maximum temperatures during this period suggest north greenland again and west really above average maximum temperatures so what's going on there's low pressure over the next three days here that produces this kind of vorticity in the atmosphere. And some of this darker color here suggesting there's relatively low pressure here, although this is mean sea level pressure, so that's kind of preposterous over Greenland. Nonetheless, it suggests some tendency for atmospheric motion in this direction. Similar weather map with the low pressure here it has precipitation in the blue colors. So this low is driving some precipitation onto Greenland, and that's where it gets interesting for this fern effect. You can also see these wind vectors suggesting the flow is crossing from east to northwest over Greenland. That's a pretty uncommon flow pattern. And precipitable water, so the moisture, the humidity, there's a kind of atmospheric river, if you will, hitting East Greenland. It's actually a very dry place here in East Greenland. So again, this is a kind of uncommon situation. Here's accumulated precipitation. This is key to the fern effect. What happens during precipitation is so-called latent heat is released to the atmosphere, specifically when there's condensation, cloud development. So I produced this map for the global forecasting system data and this North Greenland high temperatures comes into focus. This low pressure system out here combined with a weak high here is pushing this flow that has been dried out because of the condensation and precipitation. That's the key point. So this air is heated and then as it flows down slope, it'll heat further because of so-called adiabatic compression. We can have another look at this examining the data from Windy. And we're now looking again at the GFS data. We presently have a low pressure system here, Southeast Greenland, driving some flow onto the ice sheet. We have a high pressure over Northeast Greenland. So there's a tendency for the air to want to flow between this high and this low. So it's pumping air in this direction. The air will want to follow these isobars in, in general and end up in North Greenland. So if there's precipitation here, snowfall, rainfall, and condensation, the air is being heated by the condensation releasing its so-called latent heat. So that heated air is going to be driven over around this high to Northwest and North Greenland. So let's look at the forecast. And if I put the forecast at this dot here above the Peterman Glacier, pretty high. The surface terrain is 1,800 meters. So that's 6,000 feet, more than a mile above sea level. And so if we go in the forecast to say the warmest time, this has these green colors, which suggests according to the GFS model, that this whole area in green is above zero Celsius. And the temperatures at this dot are three Celsius above zero for 18 hours, so quite a long duration. Here's where it gets annoying. When we switch to the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts, the ECMWF model, let's see how this changes. So there's less green area, less heating in the ECMWF forecast for the same moment. And I have to expect that the ECMWF 
model is more accurate because it does an ensemble of I think 60 different forecasts where they adjust the initial conditions randomly at the start of the forecast and they take an average. What it does is it averages out the so-called butterfly effect. We do see the ECMWF model being less warm. So this heat wave that has been forecast is probably not as strong. It's still pretty interesting because of the fact that it's affecting the northern part of the ice sheet, which is relatively low temperatures. And the fact that this thing is driven by initially this low and, and somehow a, a mesoscale low pressure system here, which is helping push the air in this direction. So it's been heated from condensational release of latent heat. So that dries out the air, it heats it up. And when the air then starts flowing down slope, it heats just from the compression of the overlying air mass and that has a heating effect 10 celsius per kilometer of descent so up here you're at almost 3000 meters and you're descending to say 2000 meters that's 10 celsius of warming just from adiabatic compression and as the flow goes even further down slope it it will heat yet another 10 Celsius as it goes from 2000 to 1000 and even down to sea level. It will have heated 30 Celsius just by adiabatic compression. In North Greenland, if we touch on this kind of hot spot, it's getting up to 17, 18 Celsius because of, well, sunny conditions that's heating the surface combined with the wind flow well it's ecmwf has low winds in this area let's go a little bit higher on the ice sheet okay you've got eight meters per second so that's a moderate to strong wind and so it's flowing let's let's touch here 10 meters per second and air temperature near zero celsius in this kind of little green band here so yeah this weather system is it's pushing diabatically heated air from the condensation that's happening here. It pushes it up. That has a cooling effect. But once it starts flowing down slope again, it's heating 10 Celsius per kilometer from up here around 3000 meters to 2000 to 1000 meters and down to sea level 30 Celsius of so-called adiabatic heating. And that's why this area here is particularly warm. That's called a Fern effect. It's a German word for a downslope flow that is heated. In the Arapaho language in North America, it's called a Chinook wind. And the Chinook means the snow eater. And so when you have air flowing down the Rocky Mountains, it heats up a lot and it, it evaporates and sublimates and melts the snow. So Chinook, the snow eater. So in summary, while this is a really interesting melt and heating episode, it's driven by a very specific process of condensational heating of the atmosphere here where this thing starts in East Greenland, the air being pushed over between a high pressure up here, a low here, flowing down slope, heating up, and the GFS model here is quite a bit warmer than the ECMWF model. So this North Greenland heat anomaly might not be quite as strong as it appears in this forecast for tomorrow. By having this kind of detailed look, we learn something. In this case, a fern wind and uh, adiabatic heating that is contributing to this North Greenland heat wave.